Hey everybody, it's Kim Hawk and I'm known as YouTube's Fairy Godmother of Real Estate, but I'm also known as a lifestyle person for the Near Disney YouTube channel. And we have a new series and we know that Walt Disney would want us to do this because Pat Schroeder, the Congresswoman that lived in the town that Disney built passed away recently. And we're wanting to do something for everybody to remember her legacy. And one of her biggest legacies was look to the youth, look to the youth that are doing great things that are making a big difference. And today we have a Pat Schroeder award winner. Yes, we do. We do. So everybody, we want to first introduce Fernando, who is our winner. Fernando, you want to, there you go. There's Fernando but also somebody just as special to us. You know, our teachers are, are gold to us and teachers were gold to Walt Disney himself too. You can hear him talk about the importance of teachers. And so we have Miss Whitmire as well with us too. Very good. So Kathy, if you don't mind, do you happen to have your nomination, what you wrote about Fernando? Um, I don't, but his is such a cool story. It's really hard to forget. Awesome. Um, I do a combination. Sometimes I teach civics, sometimes I teach U.S. history. And the year that this happened um, was last year. I was teaching all civics classes and I had our administrators at Celebration K-8 come to me and say, listen, we have a student who wants to come take your class and he's going to take, um, he's going to stop taking U.S. history and he's going to come to your class. And I'm like, well, no, we can't do that. <laughs> I'm like, there's a certain pattern that we follow. And I'm like, I, I, I'm so nervous. We have to, you know, we, he has to finish U.S. history. He has to have the story of this country. And then he takes civics and I'm halfway through the year in civics. And how can he ever keep, catch up? And he's going to miss everything. And civics is a big year for um, students because they take a course that's a, it's a high school level course. And at the end of it, they take a, an exam that they have to pass in order to graduate from high school eventually. So he's at this point in time, how old were you, Fernando? Were you in? Seventh, I think I was 13. Okay, so typically this is an eighth grade class and he's in seventh grade. And, and so the, the administrators were talking to me, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I really don't think this is a great idea. And they're like, you need to meet Fernando. I'm like, okay, I'll meet Fernando. Well, I met Fernando and Fernando was just absolutely adorable. And he's like, yeah, I can take both classes. It's no problem. And I'm like, yeah, but Fernando, we have really like you missed six months of the year. Don't worry about it. Oh, okay, well, let's just see how this goes. I had a conversation with his parents. I said, okay. And then Fernando shows up in my class. And I've never had a student like Fernando because Fernando was like, you know what? Give me the work that I've missed for six months. And I was like, okay, I can do that. You know, I printed things out, gave him assignments, told him chapters to read couple weeks goes by, here comes Fernando again, up to my desk. He's like, Mrs. Wehmeyer, can you give me the tests that you gave everybody else? And I'm like, you don't need to do that. It's okay. He's like, no, I'd really like to take the test and see how I'll do. And he aced six months worth of tests, one after another, after another, after another. And I'm like, how are you doing this? But that's Fernando. When he wants something, he makes it happen. And I, I have never had a student that has done two simultaneous history programs at the same time. And then to just cap it all off, he did amazing on the end of the year course test. So he doesn't have to take it again in high school. He's done. He's finished with it. Fernando, I'm very impressed. Thank you. Very impressed. So where do, where do you where do you think all things came together for you? Did you just not sleep or something and read through everything? Or you only need an hour of sleep a night? How, how does this happen? I had a great teacher. I mean, everything. <laughs> Like, it was really good information. Like, I don't know what happened. It was magic, but it was, I learned a lot in a short amount of time. Well, that's pretty impressive. And um, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Uh, do you speak a couple of languages or, or what's going on? I get a feeling that you have, you have a lot of extra special uh, skills. I, I'm from Brazil. I moved here like seven years ago around that. So I speak Portuguese. So not only are you able to uh, take these tests and get ace, ace at all, you also can speak another language. And, and uh, so I feel, uh, I feel like I'm a little bit of a, a loser here only doing one language on my side. 
<laughs> so how do you like living in celebration? It, it's nice, you know, you can like, there's like downtown nearby, you can go a bunch of places. Like, it's, well, depending where you are, it's kind of like a walking distance. Yes, that's true. Isn't it cool too that our teachers are our neighbors as well, right? Like with yeah. yeah, like with Mrs. Whitmire. And she does something special as well for everybody to enjoy during the seasons too. Kathy, you want to talk a little bit about how you decorate for some stuff? Oh my, I didn't know we were gonna get into my little side hobby that we have going on. I think Fernando, you came in after Christmas to my class. I don't I don't remember if you saw what my house looked like when I posted it on our um, board or not, but my husband's name is actually Clark and my name is Whitmire. So I'm actually married to Clark W. And Fernando, I don't know if you've ever been, um, if you've ever watched the American Christmas Vacation movie about the crazy man with all of the lights that he puts the extension cords and then the house doesn't do anything and then all the lights go off on the house. Well, when you're married to a man who is named after that character and that, well, the character in the TV show was probably named after my husband. Um, my, we decorate over the top, absolutely insane. Every square inch of our yard has something hanging from it. There's inflatables everywhere. And we, for the last pretty much 19 years that we've lived here, we've won the ugliest house in celebration every year. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good prize, Fernando. Don't think it's anything less than the prize you're getting today. But <laughs> the ugliest house in celebration, whoop, whoop, that's mine. <laughs> It's a cool, it's cool. Uh, it's a big commitment with decoration and everybody loves it. And we always look forward to when their street starts getting decorated and stuff. So it's a good thing. It's a good thing. So Fernando, there's a lot of cool things that are going to happen around this as well. Obviously, we're going to have a video that's going to be up on uh, near Disney. So when you decide you want to apply for Harvard or wherever you're going to go, <laughs> I get a feeling it's going to be a top school for college. You will be able to show them on your application that you've won the Pat Schroeder award. And that will actually be a big thing, but also Pat Schroeder loved ice cream. So what we're doing is the downtown diner in celebration is going to ask for you and your teacher to come there. You're going to get an email from them uh, so that you get a milkshake from them. And they're also going to ask you if you might want to be in a cameo because they do videos as well for the diner. I think they do them on Wednesdays, that type of thing. So who knows? Somebody might find you on YouTube. That's kind of the way things happen now, Kathy. It's like you get discovered on YouTube and so Fernando, do you sing or dance or do any of that kind of stuff too that you want to know? No. no. <laughs> You're just smart and you know, that's right. Oh no, he's also an athlete. He's also an athlete. He's got that in there too. Oh, tell us about that. I do swimming just in like downtown the spring pool mm -hmm. and I do jujitsu, which is also near celebration. Ah, so you're very well-rounded. I see that. I see that. You know what else is going to happen, Fernando? There's going to be a yard sign place from the Celebration Foundation because they're very excited too. Because what we're wanting to see, we want to see young people that are making uh, making this world a better place. And definitely by being a fantastic student, that is definitely going to be high ranking because we want all of our young people to be very well educated, but also motivated. And uh, what you're doing is inspiring me now not to be lazy about learning some extra things, you know? So congratulations to you on that. What are some of your favorite things about, about living in celebration? You say that you swim and you're going to school, but is there anything that you, what makes celebration different from say, if you can remember living in Brazil? Uh, I feel, well, here, there's a school here, so I have friends closer. But I think mainly it's it's safer there, here, and it's, like, easier to walk around, and, like, it feels like, like a better environment, I think I'd say. Yeah, I, I think I agree with you. I get a lot of our friends from Brazil saying they like the safety feeling here. You know, it's very nice to be able to walk around. It's wonderful. And then, uh, so Kathy, being a resident here too, what, what would you say if you were to talk to Walt Disney today? What are some of your favorite things about the town of Celebration? 
Oh, there's so many things. I mean, I would just thank him. When we moved here, we actually traded theme parks. We lived by Universal first, and then we watched Celebration at the very beginning, and we wanted to kind of see how it was going to play out. And then we just fell in love. We were down here all the time. We came here to eat at the diner constantly. So Fernando, I'm an expert at milkshakes. Um, but we, we were just here all the time. And finally, we were like, we just need to move here. We just need to do it. And we never look back and it'll be 20 years May 1st that we've been here. I, I gave birth to my third child uh, three weeks after we moved in and she's never known another place other than this. This is her house, this is her neighborhood. And it was so awesome for us to just be able to walk to school, um, walk to the baseball fields when they were all playing Little League, to go to the parks. It was just so safe for my kids. And I just love the fact that you could let them play in the alleyways and you didn't really have to worry about any strangers coming by. Um, and all the neighbors know everybody. Everybody loves everybody. Everybody knows everybody. It's the highs when you drive by on the street. And even if for me now, as I drive home, because I'm too lazy to walk, um, but as I drive home, I pass all the kids on their scooters and I'll hear, hi, Mrs. Wildfire! And you know, they're all screaming. I feel like a rock star, you know, if I go to Publix. And sometimes it's, so it gets a little tricky, you know, when you want to go to Publix and just roll out of bed and run to Publix in the morning, but you can't because you always have to look like, woo, you know, someone's going to see you. But it's just so much fun for the kids to have grown up with their friends. And now, like, for example, my kids, my oldest one is going to be 27. Her friends are starting to get married. Um, and it's the same little circle of people that we've been friends with for so many years. And even some of the children that have already gotten married, they're moving back to celebration and living in apartments because they've lived in other places after college. And they're like, we miss celebration. It's home. And this is where we want to raise our families too. So they're starting, you know, if in these in the apartments that are here, and it, it's just it's just fun to see like the full circle of life go around. But this is just a beautiful. My mother moved here um, when she was in her 70s because she just came to visit us and loved it. And so she got to spend the last few years of her life, you know, walking distance to me, walking distance to her grandchildren. And it's just one of those communities that you've got so many different generations all just loving to live here and getting along well and just enjoying everything that this town has to offer. So my biggest takeaway to Walt Disney would be to be thankful that he came up with this concept in his mind. Yes, I love that. Fernando, we actually have a video of when Walt Disney, um, right before he passed away, his real passion was creating community. That's what Epcot, the experimental prototype community of tomorrow is. So I'm doing a series because it's the hundredth anniversary of the Walt Disney Company, talking about Walt's legacy beyond doing theme parks, which is really wanting to create community. And so what you and your teacher are showing me now too, is that Walt would definitely say, like he feels like it's, it's come about, right? It's come about. Yeah. So let me ask you this, because Fernando, I think with Pat Schroeder and everything that she's accomplished, she has, you know, she's helped many things. Uh, for example, especially for families and for women in particular, she did things like a long time ago, women didn't have any credit, so they couldn't even go out and buy a car or they couldn't buy a house without the husband signing things or the Family Leave Act. That was something where if somebody's having a baby, the right to be able to spend some time at home and making sure that the baby, you know, or the fam somebody got sick. And so when you're your age, because how old are you now? I'm 14. 14. So if I were to ask you, because a lot of times I ask people, what do you want your legacy to be? Well, 14, that's kind of tough. Let me ask you where you think you want to be in 20 years. Where, where, what do you want to do in about 20 years from now? Um, I, I'm not really sure, but like, it's like the schools, they have some like programs that like you can apply and like look around. So like, like biomed and things, that looks interesting. I think I have like, a great uncle who's a doctor, so you know, it seems interesting. So hopefully something in that area. That would be fantastic. So are you thinking about maybe trying to find the cure for cancer or anything big like that? That would be great. I mean, gotta shoot high, right? I, yeah, <laughs> I, I vote for that. And you know what, from all the results that I'm seeing, I think you can do it. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So we have a steering committee and we read the nomination and it was very, very clear that especially one of our uh, committee members 
uh, Mrs. Perez, Odie Perez, I don't know if you remember her. Yep. Mm -hmm. She wanted to make sure both of you were told what a fantastic job you do. And uh, she just gave a glowing, uh, you know, reference for you and your teacher. And she said the world is a better place because of both, both of you. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, Kathy, is there anything you'd like to say to students out there or anybody that's watching anything at all? This is your time. This is going to be on YouTube and your, your yeah. kids and your grandkids and your great, 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 who knows? Like the great, great, great grandchild will be able to see this. I'll probably still be teaching. That's my plan. <laughs> that's good. We want that. No. You know what? I just tell my kids all the, my students all the time that it just doesn't matter as long as you try your hardest. I mean, I was, I was a student that never spoke as a child, never spoke ever shyer than all get out and I found my voice later in life I found my voice after I graduated from college and I realized it was time to start talking and to make a difference and I never looked back there are times my husband wishes he could have met me when I didn't have a voice and would shut up for five minutes but I just tell my kids I said just be all that you can do with whatever God gives you and be the best possible person you can be and Fernando I just want you to know when I was 14, that's when Pat Schroeder became um, the Congresswoman that she was. So I was your age in junior high school, that's what we called it up in New York. But I remember being so excited to see a woman get this position. And she wasn't just a woman, she was a sassy woman. Yes. She was a woman that had a wicked sense of humor, very funny, but she would tell it like it was. And I was just like, for a quiet little girl, I was like, wow that's amazing that someday maybe I could be like that. And then I was actually blessed enough that I, I worked with Pat um, when I was an event planner at Stetson University. She was a guest speaker and I got to meet her in person. And it was just like, you know, she was like a rock star walking like, this is that woman. Oh my gosh, I was your age. And here I am as a grown woman. And I'm like, oh, I can't even talk to her. I'm too shy. But that's the thing. Just, you know, find your passion. If it, you want to be a doctor, be the best doctor you can be. If you want to do something else, change be something else later in life just be the best that you possibly can be and then that's all you need to do you've been a success yes i love that and fernando do you want to say anything tell about your family i i bet you are super happy that they made this move and you probably realized that was that was a lot of work in order to get here but um anything you want to say about your mom and dad or anything at all now's the time to speak yeah, I'm very thankful for them. They they make me work hard, which in the moment I'm gonna get like, super, like not like bad about it, like not not like stressed about it. But in the end, I'm gonna have to thank them a lot for it. <laughs> yes, especially when you cure cancer. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Well, thank you both so very much. We look forward to um, showing this video to a bunch of people and. Fernando, too, we want to encourage you as well. We are encouraging the people that have won to write nominations for other students. We're looking for people between the ages of three and 18 for nominations. And we're only going to do this for a year and we're going to pick somebody every week. So there's only going to be 52. And I may ask at the end of the year too to get everybody together and maybe do a video in a park or something like that to show. And I think with all this positive energy from this group, it's just going to blow a roof off. So make sure if you'd like to, you can send a nomination in as well. And if anybody's out there watching and you want to send a nomination, all you need to do is text me at 1-800-KIM-HAWK or you can email me at kimhawk07 at gmail.com. You will find us and we would love to hear the stories of other extraordinary students, young people and teachers. Sounds good? All right. Thank you guys so much and congratulations again, Fernando. And I'll see you, Kim. Thank you so much. Fernando, I'll see you at school tomorrow. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Make sure that you subscribe and like so that we can continue to give you up-to-date information on all things that are going around the 25 mile radius of Cinderella's castle because this is truly a magical place to live.